I've been using a mirrorless camera system, the Olympus, for about two years now. I've been very impressed by the quality that I can get from the cameras. I've had 30 inch by 20 inch prints that I'm very happy with the quality. It's a lightweight system. It's much smaller than my old DSLR gear, which means that I can carry a much lighter load on my back. A very important thing as a landscape photographer. And I can also use a smaller and lighter tripod. And the great thing is that Lee Filters produced the 7.5 system, which gives me all of the options that I had with my previous system. So I've got neutral density graduated filters, neutral density filters and polarizers. So I can shoot exactly the same sort of images that I was shooting before in a much smaller, lighter, high quality system without any compromises at all. We're at Westburton Falls this morning in the Yorkshire Dales, also known as Cauldron Falls. It's a difficult place to photograph. Uh, it's quite a, an awkward shot to get a decent composition. What I'm trying to do this morning is to use these rocks in the foreground here to, uh, to give me some framing and interest at the front of the shot and then uh, get the waterfall in the background surrounded by the, the trees. That's one of the fantastic things about this waterfall. It's setting. It's in a wonderful wooded setting. So I'm going to start here by taking a photograph with no filters at all, just a straight shot. Now the problem with that particular shot is that I'm getting quite a lot of glare off the water and um, that, I'm finding that quite distracting in the bottom corner of the, of the shot. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a polarising filter to kill the glare. I'll take the appropriate 46mm ring for this particular lens, screw that onto the front of the lens and then uh, get the filter holder. Now what I normally do is I attach the polarizer to the holder before I put it onto the lens. That enables me to get the appropriate orientation of the filter before I attach it to the, to the front of the lens. This enables me to hold the adapter and to rotate the polarizing filter to get the correct orientation. Once I've found the right place for the polarising filter, i.e. I'm killing the glare on the water, I can then attach it, leave it in that position and attach it to the front of the lens. So now I'll take another photograph. That's, um, that's reduced my exposure from around about half a second down to two seconds. So that's going to give me an attractive look to the water. That's going to start to blur the water, which is a look that I like to, to create with my photographs. Now the problem with that particular shot is I'm getting some light coming in to the top of the frame and um, the, to the top half just above the waterfall is quite bright now with the sun out. So what I would choose to do here is to use a, a neutral density graduated filter just to bring that brightness down, just to reduce that distraction. Uh, and what I'm going to do is to use a, a 0.6 soft graduated filter. What I normally do is I have my camera on live view and as I'm inserting the filter into the holder I just check the correct positioning of the filter by looking at the image on the screen on the back until I've just taken off that bright area at the top of the frame. That's probably it, about there, in that position. So I'll take another shot. That's looking good, I'm happy with that. It's taken the glare down, the polarizer is killing the glare on the water and the grad is taking the glare off the foliage at the top of the, of the frame. So that's all looking good to me. With the polarizer fitted and the ND grad fitted, I'm getting an exposure of about two seconds. 
that's giving me some nice softening in the water but I'm interested to see what using a, a, a little stopper, for instance, might do to the exposure. So I'll grab the little stopper and uh, fit that to the holder, making sure that it goes into the rear filter slot. Now the great thing about the little stopper and the big stopper Lee very kindly provide this guide to exposure which means that I can calculate if my last exposure was two seconds that this exposure is going to be two minutes so we're talking about a fairly lengthy exposure so I'll do a, a two minute exposure and take a look and we'll see what that looks like and that's it I think that's my finished shot I've got the polarizer killing the glare on the water. I've got the grad reducing the brightness at the top of the frame and the little stoppers just giving me a little more movement in the water. Swaledale and we're stood up above the village of Thwaite looking down Swaledale and the thing that I like about this particular scene is that we've got the run of barns going down the dale, we've got the run of trees that follow the same line. So looking at that image on the back of the camera, um, it's okay but I think we could make more of these dramatic clouds in this nice blue sky, particularly given the fact that my lens is at 90 degrees to the sun. So this is where a polarizer is going to be most effective. So just checking that image on the back of the camera, I can see the polarizers made a fantastic difference to this shot. I've got um, more saturation in the greens, but the greatest effect can be seen in the sky, where there's great contrast between the, the, the white clouds and the blue sky. So now we've moved down the dale to a location of mine just outside Muka. I photograph this barn quite often. I really like the composition. I like the line of the wall taking you in from the bottom right corner, taking you through the barn, up through the frame and out on the right hand side of the frame. It's a good line taking the viewer all the way through the image. As you can see from this first photograph, there were no filters used. The sky is looking a little bit weak. It could do with some more detail in the sky, I think. So I fitted a polarizing filter to bring out the contrast between the sky and the clouds. And I've also used a 0.6 graduated soft filter to darken the sky, just to reduce the brightness down. Another location in North Yorkshire, a place called Howe Hill, which is about 20 minutes away from where I live. So it's a location that I come to quite frequently. The lone tree acts as a nice focal point, but primarily it's the sky that draws me here. So I come when we've got some really nice skies to photograph. At this particular point in time, we've got a really nice streaky sky, some texture behind the tree. I think it will work really well in black and white. So I fitted a 25mm lens, which on this Olympus is a 50mm equivalent in 35mm terms. I'm shooting f11. I've turned the camera slightly upwards, put the tree at the bottom of the frame and making the most of the sky. I'm going to take a photograph without any filter to start with, just to see what it looks like. It's okay. 
thirtieth of a second exposure hasn't given me a, a lot of movement in the clouds and I would like to capture some of that streaking by getting the clouds being blown in the wind. So I'm going to try a big stopper. Turn my camera on to manual. Now I know by using my handy reference guide here that that 30th of a second exposure is going to turn out to be an exposure of around about 30 seconds. It, I think it'll work okay. I could even crop it to a square. I'm a little bit concerned about the lightness at the top of the sky. So I'm thinking about using a 0.6 ND grad filter over the sky just to try and even out the tone a little more. Now that has, compared to the previous shot, that has evened out that tone in the sky. It's got rid of the very light patch that I've got at the top of the frame and given me a more overall tone, even tone to work with in the processing. I hope that I've shown today that you don't need big cameras or big lenses to take successful landscape photographs. I'm very happy with my mirrorless cameras combined with my Lee 75 system. The two of them together give me fantastic image quality that I'm very, very happy with. <laughs>